Today, we're gonna discuss a possibility of image upgrade from the GoPro Fusion or the Insta360 Pro or even the Zcam S1 Pro. Through me right now is the Antonia How 250 Super Wide Fisheye Lens. Two of them and two GH5, Panasonic GH5 or GH5S. And this is a 360 degree video. So here is the instruction on how to watch this. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, we're gonna discuss and review uh, one of my custom build rigs. Through me right now, the two Antonia How 250 Super Wide Fish Islands and two GH5 or GH5S. So right now the setting of the GH5 is in 6K and a Morbid 4x3 in 10 bits, 422 mode. So it's a really huge uh, high quality video file. Uh, and the stitch quality can be up to 6K uh, monoscopic video, but you can push up to 8K because the high bit depth file recording into the SD card. So before we even discuss and compare the image quality between uh, this custom build rig with my GoPro Fusion or the Insta360 Pro, I want to discuss the, the idea behind the build of this rig. So the major reason for me to try out this build is image quality. I've been filming 360 for more than three years now and I've been using the GoPro Fusion or the Insta Pro for more than one year now. I have both of these cameras before it actually released to the public. So I've been using it for a long time. I love those cameras, very easy to use. But one of my problems is the image quality. When I pitch to client, uh, most of the time using the example footage from both of these cameras, they love the immersive, they love to watch the footage uh, in 360. But the biggest complaint they have is the image quality. They said that the image look like you feel with a GoPro. Well, even my most expensive, uh, most high quality example footage is shot with GoPro. Just 49 GoPro in an array, which is the GoPro Odyssey. But even that, it's filled with a small sensor and small OK lens. So the image quality is very limited. Even with the Zcam S1 Pro with a micro foster sensor and bigger lens, Still, if you slide down the Z cam into one camera, it's nowhere compared to the Panasonic GH5 or the Sony Alpha 7 Mark II or Mark III. So that's why the idea behind this rig. I really want to use a traditional DSLR and capture like really high quality cinematic looking 2C video. The second idea behind this rig is I want to minimize the camera use so I have less stitch line to deal with in post-production. That's why I choose only two camera, two GH5 in this build. But in the next video, in an upcoming video, I gonna use four GH5, or even a six GH5, or even using like Black Magic, or using like even Red Helium camera with the same Antonia lens to create even high quality 360 video. But let's just graduate from this two GH5 build first, and then we we'll move up to a higher quality set. So now let's compare quality. If you see why now, if you look around, uh, I'm actually filming this at night. Uh, so it's, it's like after 8 p.m. right now at my home. So look around my house at night. Uh, everything's in practical lighting. Uh, one of the camera is in 400 ISO, sh shooting in the lock mode. So it's V-Lock with the GH5. Uh, let's compare the V-Lock with GH5 in ISO 400 uh, in 10 bit video mode, 6K anamorphic, and compare the image quality with the GoPro Fusion and the Insta360 One right here, Insta360 Pro right here. So first, as you see the mirror pointing at the camera setup is the two antennae and the two GH5 with the GoPro Fusion actually right on top. They all filming at the same time. So that is actually an Apple, Apple comparison as you see right here. And, and turn around, look at my face uh, of the two GH5 setup. It's actually very clean and very sharp uh, to me and color. And actually, uh, you barely see any noise, even in this like pretty practical light lit scenario. 
And let's take a look at the GoPro Fusion right now. So as you see the mirror here, one of the fridge is shot in GoPro Fusion in 400 ISO limit. If you pay attention to the white wall, you see a visible moving noise in the GoPro Fusion. It's pretty obvious. And also the object, even the close-up object line face is not as sharp as uh, the 2GH5 setup. And especially if you see a distant object, it's very, very blurry. But GoPro Fusion does have a pretty good stitch line and you see my hand there. So now let's go ahead and flip to the Insta 260 Pro in this exact same scenario. So what you see right now is the direct footage out from Insta 260 Pro stitch with the Insta 260 Pro stitcher. As you see, they, you can also see really visible noise. By the way, the ISO is set to 400, so exactly the same. So uh, both the GoPro Fusion, Insta 260 Pro and the uh, 2GH5 all in ISO 400. But as you see, the Insta360 Pro compared all three of them had the most amount of visible noise. And also the image is not as sharp as the 2GH5. It's a slightly sharper than the GoPro Fusion from a distant object because a higher pixel because this is shot in 8K. But the rest is not as good in my opinion compared to the, GH, the 2GH5 setup. But my biggest issue for the Insta360 Pro is the visible digital noise in a low light scenario, even in ISO 400. Just a tip for you guys, for those who are shooting with the Insta360 Pro in the current firmware, my ISO will never go over 200. But let's put this into the next extreme. I actually bring the whole setup outside in a super extreme low light scenario. And here is the GoPro Fusion you're watching right now. And as you see, there's a lot of noise right now. And most of the objects in the distance, in the dark, you basically cannot see them. The information just lost in the dark, just look completely dark. And let's take a look at the Insta360 Pro. The Pro have crazy, crazy noise right now in this scenario. Because right now, I let the ISO auto. So the ISO reading from the camera is 1600s. Uh, so in 1600 ISO, the Insta360 Pro footage is unusable. It's so noisy, grainy, and just the color is bad. But let's take a look at the two antennae uh, with the GH5. So here's the footage of the two GH5. I'm not using the GH5S yet. If I use the GH5S, the result will be a hundred times better. But even just the GH5 with like 10 bit footage in vlog with a little bit denoise, you cannot really see digital noise. And if you turn around in a dark area, you can still see the red flower, even there's no light there. And you can look at the distant objects, distant houses, uh, you can still see objects around, and the noise is controllable, is watchable compared to the GoPro Fusion and the Insta360 Pro. So if you are shooting the exact setup, like the 2GH5 back to back, I will provide a neat video noise profile in ISO 400, ISO 600, ISO 800, 1200 and 3200s for you to directly use inside neat video to reduce the noise to achieve the same result you see here. But again, you can just shot with two GH5S back to back or the Sony Alpha 7 Mark II or Mark III, you will achieve really extreme good result in low light scenario. With this two antennae how to 50 fish island setup. Let's talk about the not so good about this setup. So first thing is even with the two camera setup on the stitch line area, it's still very challenging to stitch them together, especially when the actor walk into the stitch line and walk out of the stitch line, you will see the optical flow will kind of mess up while doing the crossing. And that's why you want to have more coverage instead of 2GH5, you want to you probably want to upgrade to 4GH5 with red light the Excalibur, which I will review in the next video with 4GH5 and 4 antennae lens setup. The other thing is the overexposure. The antennae HAL 250 allow a lot of light into your sensor, and your highlight are very easy to blow out. If you shoot outdoor scenes, uh, you might need an ND filter. The good thing is, when you purchase the lens, it comes with an ND filter. You need to put it in the back of your lens. Also, all the gray sync feature, point and shift feature you're so used to with your GoPro Fusion or your Insta360 Pro is not available on this setup. So for the 2GH5, you have to make sure everything's sync, including the ISO, the white balance, and also you need to clap to audio sync the footage together in post. Also, the footage come out from the camera, which shot in VLOD and Tempest is not so great. You need to do a decent amount of production, including color grading, denoising with neat video, and resharpening with the Boyce Effect Continuum VR unit to make the footage look great. 
It does give you a lot of room to do a pole production, but again, the same debate between the DSLR port and shoot are all shot stuff with the red camera. You do require the professional knowledge to really grade this footage to make it look great. So if pole production not your thing, that probably is not your setup. But pole production is your thing and you actually want to learn how to do the post production on this setup or just any GH5 setup with the 260 rig, uh, don't forget to follow my tutorial series and subscribe to my channel because in the next video I'll teach you step by step the how to color gray, how to denoise, how to resharpen the footage, how to adjust, how to stitch in Mexico, everything step by step to help you through the post processing. So you can make amazing footage with this setup. Again, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up. And if you want to learn the post workflow of this whole setup, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next tutorial.